Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeff from Stuff I Made. Um, yeah, I've been away for a little while. I've had you know, other focuses, kids and, and work and things like that. Not that that's really changed, but um, I plan to start producing a few more videos. This first one is around my dust extractor and automating that because you can see this pipe runs from the dust extractor, this uh, 1.5 or 2 horsepower, I can't remember now, two, um, 2 horsepower things hooked up to all these pipes that go all the way around my workshop and what I'm having to do when I'm using the table saw right over there, I mean it's not a big workshop, what I'm having to do when I walk right over there is walk back to turn this on and then back to turn it off um, and it's a real nuisance. The commercial systems I've seen are very expensive. So what I've found is something by a company called Quint Quintech. It's not actually for dust extraction, but what it is uh, for is lighting. However, this particular unit is rated 16 amps and 3000 watts. Um, this is a 1500 watt machine. Um, I've tested it, it does, it does the job and it works really well. So what I'll do is be, I'll be attaching that to here. Now what I've had to do is remove the power switch because the power switch is, um, as you can see here, is, is magnetic. So when there's power to it, it can engage and will stay engaged, but when, the, when you switch the power off it automatically cuts off. Now the problem with that is I could put the power on via the, the wireless quintetic thing, hit the, the fob, the power's on, then I have to come back here and engage it again. And every time I turn it off, I've got to come back here and engage again. So I'm going to have to remove this, which, well, I say going to, I already have. Um, so I'll keep that in the box for if ever I sell this beast. So what I'll do is I'll just bring you in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Okay, so here we are at the dust extractor. It is 1.5 kilowatts and it's 230 volts. We've got a live and a neutral going in, brown and blue. And I've got a live and a neutral going to the motor. And inside there you can see the earth wire. If you, if you decide to get one of these and do it to your standard shop vac, if you don't have one of these, make sure that when it, you're live in, coming from the power supply, live in, neutral in, and then to the motor or to the, the shop vac, um, live and neutral out. Keep the earth wire connected. If you have to cut the wire, then reconnect it. Make sure it's all secured back up. But like I say, this is um, me showing you what I'm doing. You do all of this at your own risk, okay? Right, so let's get on with it. So first job is to measure the dimensions of the switch I've removed and make a little wooden insert, which I'm just cutting from 12 mil birch ply on the chop saw. And that piece at the back of the chop saw there is my dust extraction. Uh, for 90 degree cuts, it's, it's awesome. Okay, so I'm just rounding the corners to, to make it fit. I'm not being particularly accurate with that, but just enough to give it a snug fit. And so now I'm just marking up for the the screw holes, just being quite rough with that in the sense that there's a little bit of slop. And now I'm going to countersink to uh, enable the screw heads to sink into the wood. I'm just doing a test fit. So here I'm just using a deep hole chalk marker to transfer the holes through to the wood and then I'm going to pre-drill them and in a second I'll um, cover the wood with some beeswax just to protect it because it's a garage workshop and it's um, prone to moisture. So now it's time just to prep the wire so I'm going to trim off the existing clips and then I'm going to fit the unit to it. It's a really relatively simple job. I'm trying to leave as much length in those wires as possible. You can't see in this shot, but it's really quite um, clearly labelled. You've got a live and a neutral in, which is the blue and the brown, and they come from the power source. And then the, the neutral, two black wires, the neutral and the live, then go off into the motor, and the earth just carries on straight to the motor. Just making sure they're all nice and snug and testing them with the pliers to ensure they're not going to come loose.
Okay, that's installed. Let's power this bad boy up. Just plug it in at the wall here. Let's see, shall we? Okay, that's the first fob. Only one of these fobs is paired at the moment. Okay, well that works. What I'll do is I'll zoom in and I'll show you how to pair it. It's very simple. A switch, I suppose. A switch can pair unlimited number of controllers. Right, okay. So this can go to an unlimited number of those, but you're going to have 10 of these to one of them. Okay, nicely packaged. Um, so this one's not paired. Hold down for three seconds. Press that once. It's now paired. That's a touch. I'm not going to have to walk around the workshop now. Uh, maybe, maybe it's not a good idea. I need the exercise. Anyway, it's done. Well, that's a nice little quick job. A little bit fiddly for the length of the wires I was left in there, but yeah, if you've got a similar setup, this is, and you're in the UK, I don't know if these are inter if you can get these internationally. Um, I'll put a link below for the product. What's the worst that's going to happen? That's going to blow before I don't know. I think I'm all right. Who knows? So just to let you know, actually, I reached out to the manufacturer based in London, and I spoke to uh, their technical guy, and I told him about the setup and what I was doing and went through the spec of the motor and, and the like. Now he did say a couple of things. He said um, he thought it would be absolutely fine for this purpose. I gave the rating of the motor. He did some sums and some maths um, and came back and said, yep, you're absolutely fine. So if you want to be extra cautious, you could put a relay uh, in between the power and the Wi-Fi, but he didn't think it was required. So the reason I mentioned that is some people on Instagram um, who seem very technical, seem to know what they're talking about, um, when it comes to electronics, raised a few concerns about the inrush, and that's the surge the motor gets when you first switch it on. There's a there's an, a sort of three to five times sort of inrush of um, amperage, and this particular unit has a um, inrush surge protection built into it. And so the technical guy at Quintech um, explained that it would be fine. So I have it on his word. And what I'll do is I'll post a comment in you know a few months of use and let you know how it's going on. But so far, so good. I've been using it for a couple of weeks and it seems great. So just a final thought. You could actually fit this in line um, on an extension lead and then it's transferable between shop back and various power tools. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.